kind of nice. Out doing the chores. And uh, went to the dentist earlier and he told me this is one of the warmest Novembers on record. Why it's going down through here, it gets slippery. So, a shout out to my dentist, Wilcott Dentistry, best dentist in the world. We love it there. I'm always bragging on him because a lot of people don't like the dentist, but he makes it a pleasure to go, that's for sure. He's got really updated equipment. He told me he brought his his. his He's own. got real updated equipment. A string you tie on the doorknob. <laughs> no, he told me that he brought. He's got this one tool that like he numbs your mouth. You can't even I feel it. I get the garden put away. Oh yeah. See what I do with the garden is I just lay the buckets on their sides and tip the troughs upside down so that they don't fill up with freezing rain and water and freeze. In the spring, I'll dump the buckets into. a my new mixer and add some more nutrients to the soil, refill them, turn the troughs back up, fill them with water, and start my garden again. Cool. Well, just real quick, back to the dentist story. My dentist told me he brought his own numbing equipment because it's not like the needle, it's just something you put in your mouth and it like vibrates to another dentist when he had to get some work done. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, these guys are all outside. Well, that They're wasn't nice. He, he threw the other chicken in the water. You play nice. Can you do a suplex or something? I don't know. My ducks are outside. Daffy and Daisy. Oh, yeah. It's really nice house. What is it, like 60, right? Oh, I'd say. It looked like the duck road. <laughs> it was funny, stretched at the same time uh, another bird crowed. And my son sent me a message that he was going to come visit me. Which is really nice in a couple weeks. Ducks are gonna like this. <coughs> okay, ducks. <laughs> Eat up, Daisy. Water jugs again. Crack corn and take some water into the quail. Okay. And I just want to remind you guys that we're going to get Clay to do some coffee time chats. 
I'm going to be doing some intense questioning of my husband with a lot of questions that people have been asking. Can you have some questions now? If well, yeah, well, yeah, I was going to say, please feel free to write any questions down below that um, you would Hi. like me to ask Clay as well. Um, we talked about doing a live stream. I don't know. Um, I. It's hard, it's hard with Clay's schedule. Like, we love doing the shout out Fridays, but with Clay's schedule, sometimes it's just crazy. So, we just want to be realistic, you know, and I'm really glad that a lot of our followers started doing the shout out Fridays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays, or something to get more followers. And, you know, and at any time, just below, if you want to give your channel a shout out in any of our videos, just write it below. We're, we're pretty easy going about that. You know, just you can feel free to do that anytime on any of our videos. Um, we never feel offended or upset. We're glad because uh, we're on YouTube to help people. And uh, that's pretty much when I learned all the things my husband knew, I said, oh my goodness. I'm get by, you you get get a scoop of share man, that information with others. Man. It's so hard to get people that have been farming for 40 years on YouTube because they're, they just, you know, they're busy and things like that. It's just really hard. So, <laughs> but look at all these guys. And Clay's raised about everything from emu, pigs, goats, horses. Quail, and uh, he's done a lot of stuff, so. All right, here's some mash for the quail. <laughs> Just gave him half a scoop of the other stuff. So what are you feeding the quail right now, then? Well, I gave, him, I gave him some corn and oats, and right now I'm going to give him some to get back. I don't want to step on anybody. Okay. They're such little guys. So you're just feeding them all in this one I'm barn now? Yeah, I'm doing it. Because they can go back and forth. Oh, look at that. We're not even sure. They're still bickering a little bit because they got all go, together. Okay, yeah, the other quail. Oops. Let's step back. I gotta give them their water. So, I, here we go. so Julie, questions in any of our videos, and uh, we'll try to get those answered for you. Give you some water. There you go. One thing that may be of interest to you guys too is I I really don't want to be doing a lot of um, tomatoes next year except for eating because I just felt like. The canned tomato stuff and the dehydrated stuff. Um, you can get things so cheap at the grocery store for two people. I don't know if it's worth it. My husband's always telling me this stuff. You still need to put stuff up, though. You, I do? For like a tomato powder, you know? Okay. Look at those guys are fussing. And, and somebody asked me how long they fight. It's usually to what? Like, one of them gives up. One of them gives up. It, it, they don't fight to the death. No, that's like a train thing. These guys will just fight long enough to see who's the who's the boss, and then when they realize they're not, they back down. So it's like a maybe can it go anywhere from two seconds to two minutes? But that's about it. They don't. If you see them fighting longer than that, that's pretty unusual. Just the light off in there, dear. Okay, now here's the light. It's just a light bulb. And we don't insulate the barn or anything because it's the drafts that kill them and we just make sure there's no drafts. Make sure the door's tight because they will walk through. Yeah, they will. All right. Yep, got it. All right. So. Okay, everybody's taken care of. We'll check Stormy, make sure he's all set. I gave him a big scoop yesterday, so. Okay. Usually one scoop will last him three, four days. I just have to check it. Yeah, because what we do is we don't, we feed the animals every day. Oh, I check them every day. We check them every day, but sometimes some animals don't eat as much. Like, Mr. Kitty sometimes will eat a ton of food, and then some days he'll have, like, these half guys, a bowl every these day. These guys have a lot of mash in there. Right. But they like their whole kernel corn this time of year because, it, see how they cleaned it right up? There's still just a little handful out there. Mm-hmm. The whole kernel corn has a live germ in it that... Once it starts getting digested, it gives them some heat. So it keeps them warmer. Hi, hey, Bubby. How we sat? Oh, you got food and water. You're good. Yeah, he's 
he's usually pretty good. I mean, the dog is, he's older. He's like almost, what is he, almost 15 now? Yeah. I don't ration him. For like a lot of people only give their dog a couple of cups of food or three or four cups of food a day. Um, I let him have all he wants because I find that if they got food in front of them all the time, they don't eat as much. Right. They eat until they're satisfied. If they if you only give them a little bit at the beginning of the day, they get ferocious appetites and they want to eat everything they, they see because they think they're not going to get fed again. So well, do you want to walk over to the bees at all? Yeah, or? we can. I just I a, it's such the, a nice day. We just I swept turned... the bees, the dead bees, off in the platform where they kicked the drones out. We were laughing with the girls at the dentist because the bees kick all the guys out. <laughs> because yeah. they have to do everything for them. They can't be feed There's themselves. No boys this time of year. <laughs> yeah. And we're not insulating the hives. And you can talk about that here. Well, um, I've been watching a lot of videos and some of them say that if you wrap the hives, it keeps the, doesn't allow the moisture to get out like it should. And the moisture is what kills the bees. And in the so we're gonna we're gonna kind of go by because this is the north. And it gets pretty, pretty wet and cold. Moisture's a big problem up here. Stripped a lot of our oh yeah, raisins. Up. I guess they had a feast. That's good. Well, so they look at the goji we're out. Goji. Goji berries or wolf berries. There's still quite a few. It takes a long time to get the berries, and once they're in. Really good for you. This is really the first season that we've really got anything off them. Yeah. It's out. And we're going to be doing more and more planting. That's for life, kind of planting for life. So it's okay. There's some of the jelly. Did they throw more out? There's more guys down there. I don't know if you guys can see. Well, any any bees that die, they'll dry. You can see some of the bees are still coming and going. So pray for our efforts. And what they do is they, if there's any dead bees on the floor of the hive, they'll drag them out. Yes, pray for our efforts that we can, I mean, what is it, November 30th? Tomorrow's December 1st and the bees are out. Yeah. But the weather's unusually warm. But well, they can get by the next, next three months, we'll be in, in good shape. That's our old well barrel. Is that the new one? That's the, that's the new one. <laughs> that's, that's the one. That's the old one. one. I'd like to get one with a plastic barrel. Yeah, we'll get that. And so our, kid, our front porch has been a mess. We, we know. It all gets done eventually. I tore down the bucket system up here. Too. But we like to share everything with you guys. This will give me plenty of spring cleanup. That's right. I enjoy my spring cleaning. We want to show you the reality. You know, we don't want you to live in a fantasy world. And the reality is, especially since we live with the Amish people so close, we learn a lot from them by talking. Like some of the homesteading stuff that people do, they they would never do because it's too much money, too time consuming. Like I was talking to one girl about crocheting. She because she said, I never see crochet because I never learned. One of the Amish girls. And I got that that was cute. Well, they have other things going on, too. Well, they, they got their garden. They, they got... use the sewing, sewing machines, and they sew by hand. Most of the Amish do. Well, the fact, Mennonites sew with sewing machines. But... In fact, the Mennonite store asked me if I would... Well, they didn't ask me. They invited me to possibly even crochet for them, but I don't really have the time to do that. But it was just kind of cute. I got tickled at that. So, you know, <laughs> well, they're business. They're in a business. So... But we may sell them some of our honey, I don't know. We donate most of the things on our farm. We don't really, we're not for profit. <laughs> so, All right. Okay, guys. We will see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless.